Everyone, welcome back to the Dark Souls randomizer run. In this episode, we are down at the bottom of Blight Town. And you can see old Super Ornstein's over there. You might remember him from the end of last episode. And we've also got Priscilla over there. Um, dead immediately. Something I didn't mention in the first episode was um, I set the boss spawn rate to be 5%. So, 5% of normal enemies would be replaced with bosses. Which I thought was a pretty good number, actually. You can see Priscilla has gone invisible, so she is somewhere. I think now we're just looking for... Looking for a couple of items. And actually, I think we're, I think we're off to the boss. Being pursued by Super Ornstein. You will see absolutely fly around the map in a moment here. Ooh, not that one. Here he goes. You can see just how far this boy goes. <laughs> He's really confined to that Anor Londo room. So down here we'll see a couple more T-posing enemies, um, because they're replacing the, the maggoty egg boys. And these enemies obviously don't have the the crawling animation. So we've got this weird bowman, and the other one has just fallen out of the world somewhere, I guess. That might be the Hundred Souls. I'm hoping this is going to be a good fight, so I'll cure my poison. Ooh, look at those purple lips. Now let's see what Quelag is. And for most bosses, we will we'll watch the cutscene, because... <laughs> It's bizarre. It's a very fun game to see if you can guess what the enemy is, judging by what textures actually make it onto the Quaylog model. I mean, th that should tell you right away, right? Something is stretched onto Quaylog's face there. <laughs> yeah, I cannot tell what that is. Oh, it's Super Smaug, of course it is. So I'm at a, a big disadvantage here, because I've got a little lightning hammer. So I'm going to do very, very little damage to him. There you go, not much damage at all. I'm also at one Estus from just running from Super Ornstein before. Yeah, not a lot of damage. And this is a pretty tough fight. I assume he will kill us with his butt slime at some point. It's actually not going too bad. I mean, it could be a lot better. But there you go. There's the butt slam. There's, there's a crash. Uh, that's me showing you how it randomizes. But you might be interested in that. And when we're back... <laughs> it's a nice way to join in, isn't it? You can see we do have another boss around. No, oh, there's a four king right there. And we had an iron golem somewhere else. Yep, good. So right to the boss. This time we've got... <laughs> Gwyn! Lord of Sunlight, who also is very, very resistant to lightning, and is also an endgame boss. So we'll see how much damage we can do to Gwyn. 57, so less than half of what we did to Ornstein, uh, to Smaug, sorry. So obviously that did not last very long, so that was an instant re-randomized for me. And we got Super Ornstein! <laughs> Also incredibly resistant to lightning. <laughs> Had some very, very unlucky rolls with these randomizers. So, re-randomize again, for sure. And Fire Sage Demon this time. Also quite late game, might be possible. Not with that kind of <laughs> start. But 
but we will try it again. Because we didn't even damage that one. As you can see, 183 damage isn't terrible this time. I think we do about as much per hit uh, as we did against the Super Smaug. But he moves slower than Super Smaug, we can get a couple more hits in. So I felt the, the Fire Sage Demon was the most doable boss we've had so far. And also I'd had to re-randomize three times. So I thought I'd, I should give this one a bit of a go. But here we are with, with one Estus left. Very early on in the fight. No Estus, we're, we're done. Time to fight. Also, the demon does have that useless butt slam attack, which is quite nice. You can pretty much always get two hits on it without having to worry about it doing anything too bad. So it was a pretty decent boss to fight. Just it's, it, the explosion attacks are pretty dangerous. I think they will kill me. I'm still poisoned as well here. You can see there just from a couple of him doing butt slams, I've got him down to basically a quarter health. Poison is still draining our health. We've also been getting very lucky attack patterns, like he wasn't doing the explosion. So using humanity to heal instantly went back down to less than half health. So I thought, fine, whatever. We're doing this, I guess. There we go. So I'm, I'm discovering the, the right trigger attack instead of the right bumper attack does a ton more damage. What was it doing before? Like 180 or something? So this does another 100 damage. That does a lot. I think we would have died there if we'd done the explosion attack. <laughs> so that was very, very lucky. I uh, got the solar Priscilla, that's nice. And we'll go grab this bonfire. Of course we can warp already. <laughs> Alright, so things are dying over there, so... That's all the demons spawning under the lava. Because usually they would be immune, I guess, but they're just dying down there now. Uh, I killed her to see what she'd get, because it's kind of a key item. It wasn't a key item. So now I'll check out Demon Runes. Again, these are replacing the Crawling Egg Boys, so they're all T-posing, including Calamite, which is pretty funny. Now I think the natural progression is to try the Ceaseless Discharge, which has been replaced with an Iron Golem. So we'll grab the item, which triggers the fight, but Iron Golem actually bugs out and just stands there. So I mean, I, I thought this was not really too much different than cheesing Ceaseless, so I just killed it. <laughs> Hooray! I'll drain all the lava, but all the demons are already dead. So I think we're trying gargoyles again now. Gotta hope we get a good gank room. That's a pretty good looking gank room, actually. Okay, maybe it's not so good. So obviously I died. Coming back through, just run. This fucking spike boy is so annoying. But smooth sailing up to the boss room now. And this should give us another great cutscene. Oh, you can actually see what we're facing already. 
Sanctuary Guardian and one of the demons. It's a little bit buggy. And funnily enough, even though the the stray demon was up there, it's been replaced by a regular gargoyle. So you do actually fight one of the, the gargoyles, but then the old Sanctuary Guardian comes in to absolutely ruin us. I think he's also quite resistant to lightning. So... I don't think this one was going to go too well. He's a bully as well. As soon as he starts smacking you around, you're dead. So I freed Lotric, who's wearing a nice top hat. And went back to try it again. Then here comes the, the Silent Sanctuary Guardian this time. Knocks me off. <laughs> also thought I'd check out the Asylum. We got a, a Sif there, right in the way. Thought maybe I could dodge around him. Because he probably couldn't fit through the door. <laughs> yeah, misjudged that a little bit. But he's still here! <laughs> Great. He just paws me off the cliff. It's good moments here. Okay, back to the gargoyles. This time we got Nito, and it looks like Smaug. And it turns out Nito just isn't scary when he's not in Tomb of Giants. You can see his, like, his screaming blade thing just doesn't work here for some reason. That's the one where he stabs it into the ground and, like, a red blade comes out of nowhere. But yeah, it doesn't work. He doesn't have his skeletons, so he's really not that scary. And because the music's so different here, you can actually hear Smaug doing his chuckling. Which you don't, you never normally hear during the the actual ONS fight, probably because there's so much going on. If you can hear him like really creepily laughing. Good. Okay, here comes the scream. Yeah, I'm still rolling, but it just doesn't seem to work. So this time I'm not going to roll to test it. It just doesn't work here, for some reason. Here we can see that that attack actually damages the other gargoyle. So poor Smaug lost like a quarter of his health there. It's very lucky that both of these guys were very slow. If they were both fast, it would have been... Or, like, even if one of them was fast, it would have been a very different fight. But you can see I do a lot of damage to Smaug, so we're just down to Nito. Who moves so slowly and doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it took a while, but it was very possible to kill him. Oh, he's doing his explosion. Good thing I was careful. That's the scary attack. That's really, and like his grab, but that's about it. Yay. Not bad. Uh, we can see what old Oswald has. Demon's Great Hammer th for a thousand is pretty good. And Black Knight Helm for 500 is okay. Nothing else really great. Sif's still here. And, uh... I forgot that I freed Lotric. So he killed my Firekeeper. 
Or he kidnapped her or whatever. Couldn't believe it. I'd never do his quest. But now I had to. <laughs> so I placed the Lord Vessel immediately. Which didn't fuck the game up, actually. Which is good. Things are dying all around for some reason. I don't know what they are. Back down here in Darkroot Garden. Just to grab some things and probably do Moonlight Butterfly. Figured we would summon Witch Beatrice because I am human and I'm not usually human. Here comes Bone Wheel Boy. But then also here comes fucking Spike Boy, who is such a pushover in the DLC by the time you get to him, but he's actually really, really strong. Which you'll see here in a moment. Just with a smack, he almost kills me, or he gets me down to like half health. And a big spin, again, almost kills me. So I think, alright Beatrice, you are on your own. I'm out of here. And that's the sound of Beatrice dying. And it looks like we got Seath! <laughs> great! Should be a great fight. But for some reason, he also bugs out. <laughs> and does not fight back or do any attack or anything. So I think, sure, I'll take it. Speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Don't know why he bugged out. I mean, it probably would have fixed if I'd, like, quit out and reloaded. But, eh. This isn't a try-hard series, this is a fun series. I got some... five purging stones, that's not bad, actually. This is where a coal is, usually. It's replaced by a bunch of nothing. It's a time for sends. Pretty good start there. A little humanity and a very easy to kill guy. Which lets us get... the Crest of Ardorius! <laughs> Which is very, very handy. And going into Sense, I thought it was going to be a lot harder. But the reality is, a lot of things just end up getting pushed to the deaths. Not this dog, obviously. But yeah, you will just periodically see souls popping up in the bottom right, because I guess something just fell. Yeah, a lot of things just end up getting pushed off. It's still fairly tough, obviously, it always is. I think it, it might be a bit easier. Really depends what you get randomed in there, though. Basement key. That's good, that takes us down to Lower Undead Burg, which opens up, like, Capra Demon and another key item for us. We got this weird bird lady who gets flung away by the boulder. And bam, she is fast. She is here already. But she still dies pretty easily. A little mosquito. That's good. It's good for us. Okay, I, I figured I should wait. Just to be sure. And don't run too early or you get just bounced back by it. So we should just about make it. Actually, we got very unlucky there. We, still, we got hit by it twice, but it didn't kill us. So we made it. That is the hardest part, pretty much, I think. We'll let it go through the wall, as is tradition. 
send it down there twice just to kill whatever's there. And now we can finish up Sens. Just the last two walkways to go. Skeleton is here in the corner. He dies in one, two shots though. There's a spooky clam who looks like he's just struggling to stay on. I don't think he fits, unfortunately. And take it very carefully. And we're pretty much done unless we get fucked by something weird spawning up top. I don't think we'll see any explosions because there's nothing to, to throw the boulders. Paladin leggings, not bad. And we got the bonfire, we didn't even get chased by a, an enemy. Usually you end up with a snake boy in here. Firekeeper soul, that's great. Great drop. Uh, this NPC sells a second fat bring, which doesn't work unfortunately. It's just down quite low. There's another item down here. The, obsid the obsidian greatsword is very good. We got to beat up this poor black knight. He stood no chance. That's instead of the boulder throwing guy. And we can actually see our boss. It's Sif again. <laughs> There's a lot of Sifs this episode. But I'd summon Tarkus because. I was human, and I never summoned him ever. Ow. I can Sif hits hard still. This is still very early in the game, obviously. I've done, like, literally the two bell bosses, that's it. Now, keep an eye on uh, Sif's health bar when Tarkus does a hit. You'll see Tarkus hits like a truck. There you go. I think he took off a, a quarter, at least, in two hits. You can see how much I do with a, a strong attack. Probably just slightly less than Tarkus does. So between the two of us, we just bully this poor dog. <laughs> just waiting there for Tarkus to get the final, final blow. Oh, so close. One more hit, boy. I'm just like, right, Tarkus, if you won't do it, I'll do it. We did it. Great work, Tarkus. So now we're in Anna Orlando. I was really praying for nothing bad here, so we could just get to the bonfire. But of course, we get one of the most terrifying enemies in the game. I'm up here with my 40k souls. Have to use humanity just to get past this guy. That was probably the worst enemy to spawn there, honestly. <laughs> like, wide enough that he took up the whole thing so I couldn't run past him. Really strong. So I still can't two-hand. Or I still couldn't, but then I just used souls and leveled up decks. So now I can use the Obsidian Greatsword, which is awesome. Never used it before in the game, but it's really, really good. So we're, we're zooming right ahead. We're up uh, doing the rafters. I figure this should be a lot easier, because things are... You know, the three things that replace the Painting Guardians are probably going to fall to their deaths. Like, this dog just disappears. <laughs> we don't even get the souls for him, so I don't actually know where he goes. <laughs> I assume he fell. Maybe he survived the fall somehow. He rolled before he hit the bottom. And at the end, we've got a another dog, a flame dog, which will probably also throw itself off. 
And just behind the pillar is a mushroom. So here comes a flame dog. Just walks off the edge. It's still a little bit stressful because it's so narrow, but definitely not as stressful. Here comes the mushroom. <laughs> Literally just throws himself to his death. <laughs> He's only worth 50 souls, jeez. We've got a Seath over there replacing a one of the, the winged imps, I guess. Oh, he just pops pops out of existence. Uh, the stray demon is replacing the gargoyle. So I think we will skip this fucker. Because no thank you. God, you can hear the sloshing. You know what that means. Old glitchy Seath is still here. I think this one actually attacks. Just doing his big old crystal attack. And he just boop, boops us off the edge. Oh, like an asshole. The second time he spawned like way further over. So he, he boops his buddy. But we can... I think he's just floating there. We can actually get under him. There's an iron golem just past him, so there's three bosses right together there. And this should also be considerably easier without the archers. You can see we've got like a club boy on the left and just a stationary guard on the right. I think Seath finally plunged to his death there, possibly the golem. It's 30,000 souls, so it's probably Seath. Club boy's slow, we can ignore him. I was kind of hoping we could fit between this guy's legs. But not quite, so we'll just attack him. And he just dies in one shot for some reason. And that means we can just mosey along and grab the bonfire. There we go, we did it. In... We did the, the rafters in one try. Got a mimic down here. Which gave us a soul, great. Skull Lantern was a great, great find. I instantly equipped that. That will make Tomb of Giants much, much easier. And these chests give us Dark Bead. Which is another great find. The robe. So this guy is replacing the Titanite Demon. That's when I discovered that the Obsidian Great Sword's second attack damages it. So I switch back to my Lightning Hammer. And you can probably hear clumping away. That was Artorius somewhere. Uh, does he have anything? He had the pyromancy flame that we've been looking for for so long. So I could try and finally try out Black Flame. It's got very, very short range. And doesn't do a ton of damage. Oh, I didn't even realize one of his buddies has uh, the Mask of the Mother or something. So his boys just get stuck down there pretty much. So it's just me and uh, Lotric. Who I just absolutely demolish. Easy. His buddies just, just disappear. When we come back, we do indeed get the Firekeeper Soul. So very key things are still given to you. Okay, what horrible textures are we going to see here? Mm-hmm. It's got horns. It could be the fucking Sanctuary Guardian again. 
It sure is. I recognize this fucker. And a clam instead of smelk. Yeah, I hate the Sanctuary Guardian. So I replaced it, we got <laughs> Centipede Demon instead of Ornstein. And the Meatball instead of Smaug, who just managed to like solo me there. <laughs> but I did realize, if you, you know, obviously they heal between phases. So if I just killed this guy real quick. If I just killed this guy real quick. I do just like four shot him. <laughs> there goes the meatball. <laughs> There's an invisible hammer there. Oh no, it wouldn't be the hammer, it would be the, the pole arm or whatever he uses. And what actually happens is because Super Ornstein and Super Smaug are considered separate bosses, it actually replaces whatever your original Smaug was, or Ornstein or whoever. So I rerolled again because I didn't want to fight Nito again. We start with a Super Smaug. And Little Mushroom, who we can three shot this time. Which will replace Smaug with Sif. But we've also fought like four or five times in this episode alone. I'm trying to think if there's any bosses I like never see. I think I think I probably see every boss at one time. But there's, there's some I definitely don't fight. So again, you can see just how much damage the the right trigger attack does. Sif's a fun enough fight anyway. Especially when you're pretty overpowered. <laughs> Especially when you just, just jump around underneath him really easily. There we go. And that will do it for the second episode. So hopefully you're enjoying it, and I'll see you next episode. Bye!